Flag flying out there, though. It's a good morning. It's a good morning. It's a good morning. It's a good morning. I'm alive and kicking. I know my dad's 90, and dad says every morning he gets up, it's a good morning. So it doesn't matter how he feels. Just the fact that he woke up that morning, it's a good morning. So I guess we'll be that way. Um, you know, before I get into what I'm talking, going to talk about today, I'm going to talk about uh, young people and what they should do. Uh, good morning to whoever that egg guy 04. Um, the third best performing of anything in uh, financial investments in the month of April was corn. West Texas Intermediate, Brent, Crude, and then Corn. So um, we happened to hold one of the commodities. The worst thing was the Shanghai Composite Index. Uh, so the Chinese stock market's still having trouble. But I uh, find it interesting that you farmers out there was either holding or planting one of the best performing uh, markets uh, last month. Okay, go west, young man. Go west, young lady. And, and maybe you need to go south. Maybe you need to go east. Maybe you need to go north. Um, maybe you need to go someplace else. Okay. Unless you have a guaranteed spot in an operation that's big enough to take you, take you on, I've read several blogs, posts in, in the last, oh, maybe month. Um, everybody knows that my state's in terrible shape. It's got all kinds of problems and everything else. And what really triggered this was a young lady was talking about how she's got a couple of her friends that have moved to another state, to another city, and they have whole much better jobs, and the taxes are lower, and uh, things are better, and they're making more money. But this person says, nope, nope. Um, I got, yeah, there we go, Elmore Farms. I got, uh, you know, dirt under my fingernails. I'm from Illinois. I'm going to stay here. Uh, the only thing is, I don't think that person's farming, um, actually farming. Uh, and I know they got extended family and they want to be around and everything else. But what I'm saying is, and that's the one mistake I look back that I did when I was young, I always thought that, well, if, if I didn't stick around here, if I didn't stay here, I'd miss some opportunity or the landlords wouldn't think I'm serious or, you know, I came up with a million and one excuses and I put up a hog building when I was still in college, and I worked, you know, raising hogs while I went to school and everything else. And and then that was fine. But I think if I had it to do over, I'd have took off for four, five, six, seven, eight years. Mom and Dad could still run the place. Uh, they probably, we wouldn't have put up the hog building. They'd have probably ship the hogs, but they'd have run the grain farming. And I'd have tried to make some good money. I mean, some, some decent-sized money, and then come back and bought more ground. Uh, and get a stake in an in a, in a area to start from, and then build upon that um, in, in later years. And, and get some experience and cash. There you go, Jim. And that's what I'm saying. You know, somebody says, well, I'm, I'm not going anywhere because I got, you know, dirt under my fingernails, and I got this, and I got that. If there are better economic opportunities for you and you're a young farmer or a young lady that's from a farm family, um, yeah, the farm will always be here. You betcha. Um, take off and go and go make that money. Go get those experiences. Go get that knowledge. Uh, go do that stuff. Because I waited till I was middle-aged and had a wife and kids and took a job off the farm. Uh, yeah, I made good money at it and I gained a lot of experience and I gained a lot of knowledge but it also put 50 pounds of weight on me and made my hair white. And I think partly because I was trying to take care of a family, run a farm, and do that off-farm job. Uh, I was trying to do three things at once, and we got it done. Uh, yeah, the way we've always done this attitude. I, and, and that's what I ask, you know, people say, you know, and, and boy, I tell you what, get my wife wound up, you know, we'll, we'll you know, be showing cattle at the state fair, and why do we do it this way? Oh, we, we've always done it this way, Judy, don't you understand? We've always done it this way. And my wife's like, so you still get the 40-20 out and mow board plow the ground, right? Um, you know, I, uh, uh, you know, get out there and, um, you know, you're, you're still, you know, I, what, whatever it is. You're still doing it by hand or whatever. No, we're not. We're not farming the way that we farmed uh, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, 40 years ago. But sometimes our mindset is to stick around like that. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with going off making good money, buying a farm, and renting it to somebody else back back where you're from. 
until you get a big enough chunk to come back where you were from. Um, you know, Kenny Chesney talks about back where I'm, you know, come from, you know, East Tennessee. But you notice Kenny Chesney didn't stay in East Tennessee to make all his money and to, and uh, to make his career. Now he can go back there and buy half of East Tennessee now and live wherever he wants in East Tennessee and be fine. But, um, yeah, I don't think anyone should go directly from the school to the home farm. And, and, and one of the reasons is, is um, my boy who went and got his welding uh, certificate and he went and he, and he got a factory job. And, um, I mean, his first place that he interviewed from, first place offered him a job, he took the job. He's working there a year. Uh, going, to, going to almost be a year in May. And he's like, yesterday, you know, Dad, um, uh, it... It, it's yeah there's there's always a choice but uh you know dad the farming's not that bad i mean he's he's really bummed out and he, don't get me wrong he gets up every morning he leaves at 6 30 he goes and works uh he's been helping a buddy roof a house on a weekend so he's been trying to make extra money he saved six thousand bucks already um you know uh the um uh the the whole thing there is, you know, he's worked hard, and you know, the far, the working hard on the farm's not as hard work now as what he thought it was. But and, and not saying he's going to come back to the farm, but he's actually like, you know, I may go back to school, Dad. And I'm like, yeah, if you want to do that, you know, you're young, let's do that. And um, um, yeah, where he learned it from, he wanted to get up every morning and do the chores and everything, but. The, 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 what, why, but I've read these blogs from these people that say, oh, you know, I got this extended family and that. It, it, it's nothing to jump in a vehicle and drive six hours back home for a weekend and then drive back six hours to, to wherever you're at. And I know you may miss, miss around home and you, and you may miss the farm and you may miss the dirt and you may miss everything else. But if you got a great opportunity to really go learn something and, and to make some decent change and to go, go west, young man, go west. I mean, that, that's the old saying, you know, go out west, make your fortune, and come back here. Um, and and you never know where those opportunities may lead and where it may go. And so when, when I read these young people saying that, yeah, I'm going to stick in this place and I'm going to pay high taxes and I'm going to, you know, tough it out and everything else. Now, if you got, you know, somebody offering you a farm and you're going to be able to farm there and, you know, get working and going and all this other kind of stuff, well, then that's a different story. But if not, uh, don't stick around right where you're at um, because it's a better opportunity. And, and talking about my boy there, uh, he's had a chance to go to a couple other places and make, you know, three, four or five dollars more an hour, but... It's not really much different than what he's doing, and he says, you know, by, I go, by the time I go get a place, by the time I live on my own, I'm not any money ahead. I can stay there with you and that mom. Now, so he's sticking around, yeah, but he's sticking around because he's piling up money. So if you're sticking around and piling up money because it's a cheap place to live and you can still help out and you're, and you're doing it that way, that's okay too. But some of these kids coming out of college uh, to get the best opportunity, you know, as, as the, the university that I'm an alumni of, the Ag Department always says, we got a 100% job placement if you're willing to move. Now, if you're not willing to move and you want to stay at home, we may have a tougher time finding you a really good job. But if you're willing to move, yeah, go Redbirds. Uh, uh, boy, they need to switch the, the baseball coach, it looks like, too. Now, wow, uh, has our baseball program went to pieces. But, oh, well, I digress. Uh, the... Uh, the, you know, you got a hundred percent job placement if you're willing to move. So you may need to be willing to move, and you may need to be thinking about that. And I understand. I understand that that one reason why a lot of ag kids go to junior college anymore and then go to four year school is because they're the best uh, green card operator mom and dad could find. They're the best help to fill in to have babies if mom and dad need to go somewhere uh, that they can find. You know, they're the best help at working ground or, or doing whatever that they can find. And so uh, I had a, a friend that was a professor. He's retired now. And he always complained about that. Well, these kids should go off to four years of school. They should go off to four years of school. They should go experience college, you know. And he's changed his tune. And he's pretty much like, yeah, the reason they all stick around and, and go to junior college is because it's the best help mom and dad can find. 
Um, literally, it's the best help they can find. And but the thing is, don't stick around just to be a hired man. Uh, wish there were more online ag programs for those of us that went west to the military. Yeah, and, and you know, uh, if you went to the military, and I I salute every veteran out there, whether you've been in action or not, doesn't matter. You you went out there, and you see that flag there flying behind us. You went out there to represent that. I appreciate everything you've done. But as soon as you're out of the military, go use those GI Bill benefits and go back to school if you can. Or, you know, I, and I understand, you know, you, the, the I've had some people talk about, you know, their kids getting out of the military and then going to college, and, and it's almost a culture shock. And I understand that, and, and I get that. Uh, but, you know, go, go back, if you can, go back and get an education or use your military skills and go get you that good job. But, yeah, go west, go south, go east, go north, uh, go 10 miles down the road, go a thousand miles down the road, go where you need to go to better yourself. The farm will always be there. Mom and dad can take care of it. And when you do come back, you'll be a better person for it. You'll be better prepared. You'll have more skills. Um, maybe you'll have a little extra money that you'll have saved up that, that and you don't have to make a living off the farm. So you can reinvest everything back into the farm. And the farm will be better for it. The farm will be better for it. So, hey, that's breakfast with Bill this morning. Uh, and, and, I, and I know there's some people out there with some blogs that will probably be thinking that I'm ripping on them. And I'm not. I'm just bringing a different perspective of where I've seen things go and how I've seen people do it. And I, I've seen people come back to the home farm in their 50s. I've seen them come back in their 60s. You know, Dad Dad was never going to give it up. Dad was always going to farm it the way Dad wanted to. They went off and got another whole job. And then when they retired, Dad was ready to quit or Dad died. And they came back and farmed it then. And they started farming in their 50s. And you know what? They're probably going to farm for 15, 20 years with really not any financial worries because they're drawing that retirement check or that money they all got saved up or everything they've done. And they're really enjoying farming the home farm. And they're not struggling uh, trying to figure it all out and trying to get it along because of what they did. So, hey, just some just some crazy advice to you uh, young farmers out there. And you've seen what Jim Smith said and uh, a few other people said, uh, what Elmore Farm said. Um, we, we may not know a whole lot. We, might, we may be a bunch of old guys with white hair. We may be crazy. But... Um, uh, just listen to us sometimes. Every now and then we may know what we're talking about. Hey, um, yeah, go get a way to gain respect from parents. Don't be the 50-year-old hired hand. Yeah, and I tell you what, I've seen that. I've seen that, guys, that that are almost 60, and Dad's still calling all the shots. Um, they, they still work the ground because Dad plants. Nobody's going to plant but Dad. And you, you don't want to be in that situation. Um yeah, lots of different options. That's that's farm and wife there. So, um, and, and we'll we'll make the place run without you. We'll figure it out. And you know what? If we have to, we'll rent it out what what we own to somebody else. And then when you come back, uh, you can you you know you can take that back over. So hey, with that, breakfast with Bill, everybody. Thanks for listening.